History in the making here in Michigan, why officials say we have one of the largest, the lowest recidivism rates in the country. And after several months, the control of the state house is now back in the hands of Democrats. How this new dynamic could impact the political workings of Lansing. Covering West Michigan to protect and alert you. This is News Channel 3, live at 6. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here on News Channel 3 Live at 6. I'm Andy Dominiani. We have an update tonight following a story out of Calhoun County. A Battle Creek man is now facing charges in connection to a homicide that happened there early Tuesday morning. 43-year-old Thomas Knickerbock. Street near Michigan Avenue. There they found two people with gunshot wounds. 47 year old Clayton Holt was pronounced dead on the scene and a 34 year old Battle Creek woman was taken to the hospital. When last we heard she was in critical condition and Knickerbocker was denied bond and is back in court on May 3rd. Also new at six tonight, U.S. Attorney Mark Totten of West Michigan is warning people to stay vigilant about who you talk to online and about what information you share. It comes along a new announcement from his office today. A 35 year old from South Carolina is charged with sextortion causing death. Authorities say the man posed as an 18 year old girl on a dating website. He then sent the victim a nude photo before telling that victim he was only 15. The man then allegedly claimed he would report the victim a pedophile unless they paid him money. That indictment further alleges the victim killed themselves as a result of Boyd's sextortion. A Totten put out a statement today saying, quote, I strongly urge everyone to remain aware that criminals constantly troll the Internet to not assume people are who they say they are and to know that if you make a mistake, law enforcement is eager and ready to help. Uh, Michigan is making history when it comes to criminal reform. The State Department of Corrections says our state now has its second lowest recidivism rate ever. Recidivism, of course, being the rate at which former inmates return to prison or reoffend. Authorities are contributing, the, attributing rather, that good news to new programs aimed at reform and community integration. News Channel 3's Carter Landis spoke with the Department of Corrections today. Carter. Yeah, Andy, it's an overall positive trend based on the numbers. About one in four former inmates go back to prison. It can be for a parole violation or committing a new crime. Before the last couple of years, recidivism never fell below 23%. So it's a big deal, and they're saying it's all thanks to quality programming. The Michigan Department of Corrections reviews outcomes of people who leave prison each year. They monitored 6,000 people who left prisons in the state in 2020. What they learned was just under 23% of those people returned to prison. This is the second lowest percentage they have seen in the state, second only to the study from the year before. I think that's a testament to, you know, the creativity and the drive of the department during that time. We've uh, taken on a lot of new initiatives. Um, we've really refined our approaches in some areas. Um, we're doing what works. We're doing it more consistently. Um, and as a result, we're, we're, you know, seeing more people be successful. Kyle Kaminsky, the Offender Success Administrator for MDOC, credits the programs and resources they provide inmates that allow them to be successful. Some of those resources include providing inmates with driver's licenses or state IDs before they leave prison, safe housing once they leave prison, and skill training that opens up more opportunities for jobs. We're, uh, you know, very focused on trying to meet folks' needs so that they can be successful uh, with, with a focus ultimately on employment and self-sufficiency. As people re-enter society, Kaminsky hopes people will give them a chance to become members of their community once again. For each of those 6,000 who was successful, that's one less person who committed a new crime. And that could have been a crime that impacted our families or our communities, et cetera. And even if we don't feel we have a direct connection to the criminal justice system or corrections, we all do. This impacts every single community in Michigan. Kaminsky also telling me they offer everyday support to individuals as well. Those things include items such as toiletries or even bus passes so they can get to job interviews. He also says people are getting jobs they weren't able to get before, such as robotics and auto mechanic positions. Live in studio, Carter Landis, News Channel 3. All right, Carter, thank you. Storms rolling through West Michigan early today, bringing some strong winds and rain. These are just some of the photos sent to us by our viewers in our Chime In gallery. As we take you live over downtown Kalamazoo on a Wednesday, we can tell you those storms have moved on and up and out. But the days hanging out in the 70s are also going to be gone for the time being. Here's Chief Meteorologist Keith Thompson with a look at your 
Thursday forecast and Keith, the storm sort of blew that hot air out. Oh, you bet because you know Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we had temperatures in the mid 70s, well above average. Well, as Andy said, those temperatures are going to be moving out. The rain's moving out too. What's up in your evening fast cast? I'll have the answer in 15 seconds. Hi, I'm Abby Vandenberg with Maple Hill Subaru. Subaru is rated number one in safety, product quality, and quality for the price by ACSI. We have our largest selection of Subarus on lot and ready for delivery. Maple Hill Subaru, for quality like no other. Well, temperatures have cooled off a bit behind those showers. Maybe you can feel it when you're out and about, and in part it's because our dew points are falling too. 62 in Kalamazoo. We have upper 50s, low 60s, pretty much area-wide. Where's the rain? All oh, the thunderstorms are well off to the east. They're already in Canada right now. Still a couple of sprinkles just south of Coldwater and also right around Muskegon. What's on tap for your hour-by-hour -hour forecast? If you're out and about this evening, cloudy. A few sprinkles possible, but by and large, the showers are gone. How about a little clearing? You can see at the distance. What a gorgeous shot here. Thanks to the city of Holland. As we say hello to the Tulip City looking off to the west. And with that in view, here's what I'm tracking. It's what's next. Rain gear ready. That's right. Another rainmaker is on the way. We say goodbye short sleeves with cooler air moving in a chilly weekend. We're going to have sunshine and sweaters. That Saturday Sunday outlooks in the seven day coming up. Andy. All right, Keith, thank you. And a developing story happening tonight. The Palisades Nuclear Power Plant in Van Buren County is one more step closer to reopening. There is a special meeting happening right now at Lake Michigan College to fill the public in on what's happening. News Channel 3's Autumn Pitcher is live from that meeting after speaking with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And Autumn, this would be the first time in American history that a shuttered nuclear reactor is actually reactivated. Yes, Andy, it would be pretty incredible. Now the NRC is looking at the safety of the plant, telling me that Holtec International has to meet a certain criteria when it comes to safety guidelines for this plant to reopen. Now you can see I'm at the NRC meeting right now, and it's really starting to uh, pile up. You can see all kinds of people lined up down the hallway here. They're going into the auditorium, and really they have included the public throughout this entire thing to really make sure they're understanding what's going on when it comes to every step with the Palisades. Now, Holtec International purchased the Palisades just a month after closure in 2022 and has been working to get it fired back up ever since. But before that can happen, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has to reauthorize power operations to allow Holtec to move forward with plants. Right now, they're assessing the plant and review reviewing the restart panel, making sure Holtec checks off everything within their safety guidelines. The 432-acre plant would generate 800 megawatts watts of power, providing 800,000 households with electricity across West Michigan. The NRC says they will include the public throughout these discussions. Uh, assessment is only about the safety aspect of, hey, can Palisades start up safely and then do what it needs to do to operate? There's other things that you would have to make sure that the system, like pipes that are designed to move water, have been inspected. Because remember, the pipes haven't been used in a long time. It's been two years. The plant has received local, state, and federal support just last month, $1.5 billion from the U.S. Department of Energy. Now, the NRC hopes to complete their assessment by August of 2025, but they say that that date is not set in stone, and they will do everything that they can to ensure safety before this plant reopens. Live in Benton Harbor, Autumn Pitcher, News Channel 3. All right, covering the Capitol after winning two special elections, Democrats now have the majority control in the Michigan House of Representatives. Our team spoke to lawmakers from both parties at the Capitol today. News Channel 3's Princess Shawnee Steverson has more on how this new dynamic could affect future progress in the House. As election season ramps up, many Michiganders are worrying what leadership will look like in Michigan's House of Representatives. I think that the best part of being back at full majority is we're actually going to get to start moving the agenda. There is lingering worry from the general public that many pressing topics such as Michigan's state budget could be negatively impacted or put on a lengthy pause if members of the House can't come to 